All right, we should be underway here for the stream. I better put out a tweet though. Welcome. Hey guys. No, it was supposed to be a week ago, but uh, they changed it to today uh, because everybody else could make that happen. Um, and since the draft finished kind of early-ish, they figured, oh, let's just run it. So how's everybody doing tonight? And can you hear me well? Um, I turned up the volume this time on my mic a little ahead of time since some, last time it didn't work quite as well. Uh, <clears throat> and also there was a weird thing. Hello, friend. Um, I'm trying to make sure that I have all the cards in here. It's a little awkward, though. Just because it's like, um, you hear good. So this is the draft here, and I'm just trying to make sure I got all the cards in here. So Batterskull, Liliana, Thoughtseize, Goyf, Blossom, IOK, Duress, which is over there. Birds, yes. Decay, ooze. Hey, thanks for listening to the podcast. Yeah, this should be fun. I I've been looking forward to this for a while. Uh, the deck came out pretty decent too, so I think we should be able to put up a fight against pretty much anything. But tough competition in this uh, in this pool, no doubt about it. So we'll. See what we can do about it, but uh, I think the deck came out pretty good. Uh, let's see, Pulse. Yes, there's a Pulse. Uh, elves. Thrundaddy is here. Sorry if this is covering it up, just give me a minute here. Elvish Mystic. Where am I? Here we go. Big Karn Father, he's in there. Elves of Deep Shadow, Corsair. Sword of that thing. Tassigers sitting there with his bananas. Uh, Arbor Elves in the board. Yes. Obstinance in the board. Garrick Relentless main deck. Whisperwood main deck. Doomblade main deck. Knight's Whispers in there, Shriek Maw's in the board, Slime Ball, Oracle, Woodland, Twilight, yes, Damnation, Ugin, Whip in the board, Go for the Throat in the board, Wall of Roots in the board, Sidisi in the main, Wrench Mines, Board, Putrefy Wheel, Grave Titan, Main, <laughs> Primal Command, and then Den Protector I put in the board as well, although I, I bet you that's main deckable somehow. Okay. So we've got our whole deck here. I can make a couple of tweaks. Like my main consideration here, uh, if you take a look at the deck, yeah, it gets a little bigger, is um, is trying to decide if I want to run, run 16 lands or 17 lands. Normally I like to err on the side of caution, um, but we do have one, two, three, four mana elves at our disposal. So we'll very often have one on the first turn of the game. Um, I do think I'd rather run 17 instead of 16, but man, what the heck do I cut from here? Have I been watching Randy's practice games? No, I didn't actually know he was on, but I, I wouldn't watch anyway. I think that's just a little, you know, I'd, it might give me an unfair advantage or, or something. I don't want to do that. So what in the world should I do here? You guys are 70% done with your matches, Trevor. That's insane. You guys think 16 is okay? I've got Oracle 
of Moldaya here. And it's got a little weird. Um, I've got Oracle Moldaya, and I've also got a Courser of Crufix. Yeah, it's more like Intro to Modern Cube. That's a good way to look at it. Volume's good. Excellent. How many matches are we playing? Well, hopefully a bunch, um, but we're going to play three no matter what. Starting at six, we're going to play three of them. And then uh, from there, uh, we have to have won enough to make it to the next portion. Um, if not, then eh, we'll call it a night and that'll be it. Um, but if so, then we move on. Hey, Willie. <laughs> well, we got a we got a decent little amount of viewers here. I'm actually quite happy with that. Remember, everybody in this thing is streaming, <laughs> is streaming it. So, you know, I don't expect a, a huge numbers um, just for that reason. But you'd be cautious reducing lands. Yeah, I think so too. They can be pr prone to flooding. Um, I've tried to mitigate that a few different ways. But the main one is I'm main decking a Knight's Whisper, which somehow just disappeared. All right. Get back in there. In fact, let me do this real quick. If you guys want to know how to force Magic Online to save your, your deck, it saves automatically, periodically, but... Um, if you, if you just switch scenes to any of these other ones, it'll save your deck in case you didn't know that. Carly Ray Jepsen and why is she my favorite singer? Well, <laughs> that's complicated. Yes, of course you can. Still miss John. Yeah, we all miss John. Oh, okay. He's practicing with Chris and Sam. Well, that's cool. I, I haven't I haven't been looking though. I've been uh, making sure that I have all the cards in my deck and kind of tweaking my build here. Uh, we have to submit the same opening build for each of the matches, so I really want to make sure that this is like the most well-rounded. As you can see, um, depending on who we play, we're going to have a lot of action. Heavy creature-based deck. I can bring in a Damnation. Uh, Shriek Ma can come in uh, as long as well as uh, Go for the Throat against a control deck. We can bring in Duress. Wrench Mind, Whip of Erebos, you know, just try to wreck them. Den Protector against the mid-range decks, Wheel of Sun and Moon against Rashad. <laughs> no, Tassiger could be in the main. He's not in there now. Would you put him in over something? Why don't I stream more often? It's just scheduling stuff. Like I'm like I just got back from Europe from the Pro Tour stuff and I'm still jet lagged and kind of tired and uh and then I'll and then I have like a week and then I'll be doing GPs and gone a lot. And so it's hard for me to do a um, regular one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Den Protector's a good mana sink, I agree. Who am I hoping to play? I think Chris is my good matchup because I get the black removal spells against his white and green creatures. And I and I have ways to overpower him in the late part of the game with Karn and Ugin that he he can't uh, – well, I'm not saying he can't deal with, but that he's not really well equipped to deal with. That said, uh, you know, hoping to play somebody of Chris's caliber is not, uh, not a smart way to approach magic. So, And I'm going to be at States. Um, I don't actually know when it is, but I might be. Can I make the cards bigger? Yeah, absolutely. I'll move the sideboard off for you guys. Here, we'll put Ugin there. Yeah, I, I do kind of feel like I want that extra land. I don't know. I don't have great mana sinks. Like, it's just sort of casting big things. I don't... Is there anything repeatable I could do? Uh, let's see here. Whip of Erebos would be a good one. Um... I have some decent stuff to whip back, but I really want to bring that in against the aggro decks. I don't think I want that to be my base strategy. No, they're losing, James? That's terrible. I haven't seen a lot of um, tweets about him. You really like my deck? Good, I, I like it too. Tassiger, Tassiger is possible. Oh, you bet. RGD, get in there, buddy. I don't know what to cut, though. You know, I... I'm really at this point where like each card is really kind of pulling its weight and I, and I'd cut a card like abrupt decay. 
this old thing. I could uh, I could take out Abrupt Decay and replace it with a land or with Tassiger. I think that is a thing I could do. Does Primal Command have any good targets in my pool? Well, yeah. I mean, I get to view, get a creature. I mean, look, look at my sweet creatures, right? I can get Grave Titan, Sadisi to go get something else again. I can, you know, go get a value creature like this. I can get Whisperwood and just dominate the board. It's it's quite good in the deck, I think. Oh, so we just caught up. Yeah, I could cut Acidic Slime. Uh, I don't really have any way to deal with those type of things otherwise, though. Um, I do in the, in the sideboard, but not in the main. I, I mean, I suppose Karn counts, but... <laughs> Has anyone seen anyone else's main board? Uh, no, mm -mm. that that hasn't been made public. I'm just whatever. We're we're ten minutes away from the from the matches, and I figured it'd be fun to to share it with you guys as I made the last couple of tweaks to it. I I, I trust the other guys. Like I mean, I don't know. I, they know my my deck. It, they know all the cards, right? So it's not like a big deal. <laughs> Interesting. Everybody, everybody seems divided on this, whether I should be in 16 lands or not. I feel like I want one more forest just to make sure that I hit the, the mana every single time. Yeah, and let's also just be honest. There's just a never-cutting slime ball. That's my guy. Yeah, Tassiger's here. I could put him in. He could totally make the cut. Um, I'm not abusing Tassiger. I think that's part of the problem. Um, you know, I didn't... I, I, part of my strategy was to not take lands highly while everybody else fought over them because I figured I'm going to be two colors. I don't need that much fixing. I'll pick up some later. Um, but that means I don't have any fetches. So like I'm not powering out Tassiger like you can in modern, you know, cause in modern you can get him down on turn three or whatever quite easily. Um, I think Sidisi is better than Tassiger because Sidisi turns these dorks into fodder for getting my big spells later and I like that combo Elves of Deep Shadow yeah but Elves of Deep Shadow uh, is is my best mana fixing elf it allows me turn 3 Lilian of the, or excuse me turn 2 Lilian of the Veil pretty easily I, I can't cut that yeah Tassiger does get a lot worse now if the elves die right you bet you can. If the elves die, then all of a sudden uh, Tessiger gets better because they're in the yard. You can delve them away and, and get Tessiger down to recover. Like if my opponent's like lightning bolt that, kill that, kill that, kill that, you know, then then I could do it. But I think I like Sidisi better. And plus, I just want to try Sidisi out. Where she, You should start learning how to play poker better, probably at 2 plus 2. Or um, you can check out Bart Hansen's site. I like that a lot as well. It's called Crush Life Poker. Am I going to be playing any events at the WSOP? Maybe, probably not. I, uh, I every time I go down, I end up playing in one or two, and I and I I don't like playing tournaments. I like playing cash games, and that's what I go down there to play. But then I just somebody talks me into it, or I talk myself into it, and I'm like, why am I doing this? But yeah, it might happen. I'll be there for a while though. Oh, you pre-registered for Vegas? Awesome, that's great. Ooh, LSV signed your play your play set of Force of Wills. That's pretty sweet. Yeah, Ooze, Blossom, and Decay. I agree. That th those are definitely three of the ones that I'm looking at too. I'm actually considering cutting the Abrupt Decay. It 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 get it takes away like a key way to interact, but I still have a Doom Blade, the Thought Seizes, the Liliana, and then maybe I re replace that with a Forest here. I think this is what the what the heck can I move to deck okay well that works all right yeah the land count the land count really does help for a courser and oracle as well I mean getting anything is good but I think this is I feel a little safer about this I feel a little little sketchy though just because like i'm not really interacting with my opponent much i have tons of interaction in the sideboard but my main deck plan is just like hardcore ramping out guys and that could work 
Yeah, I think this is the deck that I'm gonna I'm gonna play here. This, this one I think feels a little better. The abrupt decay is not good against everything anyway. It's a, it's good against some decks. Yeah, I don't know what's up with the art on Elves of Deep Shadow. I think that's the uh, the art from the original, maybe. Pretty intense. Let's see here. So this is the dark. Yeah, it's the original, the dark artwork. It's actually pretty cool. It's by Jesper Mirforce too. He's a, I mean, he did the original planes. Like he's a pretty important guy. Who's my hockey team? The Habs. Who else? Yeah, that's the original art. <clears throat> Does this deck have a name? Uh, I guess it's just Green Black Ramp. I, I didn't really name it. Um, I was I was actually planning on it being a uh, a rock deck. I thought it was going to be like a Tarmogoyf Inquisition Thoughtseize style deck, and it has those elements. But um, I kind of got fought for for some of the stuff that goes into that deck really well, and ended up drafting a lot more mana elves and tr and beefing up my top end with these really potent five drops and even a, you know, a seven and an eight up here too. F the Habs. <laughs> I don't even know who they're playing. I've just, I've only been to one professional hockey game or not professional, but uh, NHL hockey game before. And it was the, the Canadians in, in Montreal or wherever. And it was fantastic. I loved it. Lemon flavor tea. By the way, one of the best names ever, <laughs> uh, and I'm, I'm happy to hear that too. Who would come in second in a pizza eating contest of all LR hosts? Uh, well, I'll tell you who would win that, Luis, not remotely close, so I would probably come second. Why no Maelstrom Pulse? I, I, what would you put it in over? I'm okay to play it, but I, I don't really know what it's it's coming in over. All right, I got to figure out what I'm supposed to be doing here. Uh, oh, there's I'm supposed to be on Skype. That's what's supposed to happen here. So I will do that. Uh, I'm going to up upload this stuff to YouTube. Yeah, I will. Um, I set the thing to do it. Are uh, you still using the Blue Yeti or did you? No, uh, I actually never used a Blue Yeti. I was using a uh, the Blue Snowball, um, but I have since changed to a Rode Podcaster mic. All right, let me get caught up on this chat here. Okay, it looks like I'm playing Josh. That's uh, uh, Josh Monks. He he does the behind the scenes stuff for like Vintage Super League and and that kind of stuff with Randy. And he, well, he didn't actually draft. Yeah, the the YouTube the LR YouTube channel. Uh huh. The one where you can find the set reviews and all that stuff. Uh, I've been wanting to ask this for a while. How tall am I? I'm six five. I'm actually quite tall. Um and uh, and he's from and so I'm going to be playing against BDM's deck. So let's bring that up so that we have an idea of what it looks like. So if you look over on the right here, this is Brian's deck here. Uh, this is the one that started off with Splinter Twin, blue red, and then moved into white red Splinter Twin with a little bit of blue. He's got some Wraths. He's got some stuff. It's, it's actually a fairly tough matchup. I'm a 5-7 on occasion, it's true. Pulse does hit more targets. You might be right. I don't know. I think Doomblade is super underrated. Uh, nobody else is in is in black, so we should be able to kill everything. Um, is Shahar taller than me? Uh, me and Shahar are about the same height, actually. We've played basketball against each other, and, and we're you know pretty pretty even on that. 
Yeah, I think I'm a little soft to Wrath, but not too bad. I've got Whisperwood Elemental, which helps against that. And then these Planeswalkers do a good job. Like, my recovery plan should be strong. If I just go, like, Elf, Scavenging Ooze, Corsair, Oracle, and get Wrath, yeah, we're screwed. Uh, th that would be very bad. I, I don't know if I am top three, actually. I'm I'm up there, but, uh, you know, you ever stood next to Huey? That guy is a beast. He's real tall. Okay, I need to now go to Play Lobby. Constructed Open Play. And is it just for fun? No, it's none of these ones. All right, so those guys are getting set up. It looks like a couple of the matches may be underway, but where are they? Um, I can, I can put the link for the spreadsheet in the, in the thing here. Yeah. They always make me sit on small chairs so that I don't tower over everybody else in the booth. <laughs> it's really funny. Okay. So where do I go then? Yeah, it can be hard. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a lot taller than Randy. So this is gonna be a funny uh, matchup. We're gonna we're gonna miss the uh, <laughs> the abrupt decay that I just cut. That card's quite good against our opponent here. How many Marsh Hulks have I signed? Oh, it's it's decent amount. Uh, getting serious. I'm in getting serious. Format free form. Players one on one, buddies, watchers, yes, and then 40 minutes. Okay, I see it here. Uh, okay, let me make sure I got the right deck chosen here. Modern Roto. All right. All right, so let's see if we can uh, if we can beat BDM's masterpiece of a deck. It's basically blue white control. Uh, that's that's what we're looking at here. So, or excuse me, uh, red white control. So we lost the die roll, um, but we are underway. That was very good, very cool of Josh to jump in and, and play for BDM. Um, BDM had a, a family obligation that co he couldn't get out of. Um, so yeah, yeah. Rashad's deck is insane. Um, so we obviously have to mulligan that hand. This one we can definitely keep. Uh, if our elf survives, we can make a turn two courser, which can sort of power us through to get Garrick and, and Ugin going. So this should be fun. Remember, we're playing Modern Rotisserie Draft, which is going to resemble, uh, let's see here. Now I could actually play the Mystic if I'm just going to play the Corsair, but if I draw Liliana, I'll be happier if I have the Elves of Deep Shadow down, but the Elves will start, will start doing damage to us, so the chances we draw Liliana are quite small. Oh, actually, this doesn't work the way I want to anyway, because <laughs> I've only got the one green mana source. So I have to play Elvish Mystic. All right, so Mystic in the Corsair it is. Ooh, this could actually work. Uh, yeah, let's do that. Let's get Mystic in the Corsair going. And uh, we obviously can't play a land this turn, but hopefully we'll we'll get this chain going. And, and Corsair is pretty difficult to deal with. 
We can kind of sit. I think our next play is going to be a Garrick Relentless if we can make it work. Oh, must be nice. Lando. No, he's going to upkeep kill. No, he's not going to upkeep do anything. All right. And we're going to draw our batter skull, so that's nice. Um, I think I just want to play Garrick here. I'm a little concerned that it's going to get countered or something, but I, I actually can't remember exactly what he's got. And I think Garrick is our best threat against a Wrath. If our opponent untaps and Wraths our board, we'll, we'll have a Garrick Relentless still, which is a pretty big deal. Goyf, I think, will be our cleanup play. I think we're going to play Tarmogoyf like if he Wraths because we'll get Creature, Enchantment, uh, all that kind of stuff in there. Uh, yeah, let's make a dude. And then we're going to rumble with the Courser, I think. Yeah, that makes sense. Is there any way to lower the quality? Do you mean on my end or on yours? I don't think I can lower it. Ah, uh, I see. I, I have to be a partner to have that little option. I forgot about that. Yeah, sorry, guys. You mean good start. Yeah, if he goes Exarch into Twin, we're super sad, but as you can see, we are currently not in a position to fight that. So we just let it be what it is, and uh, and we're just going to try to just beat the crap out of him. We don't. I'm not going to play any other threats here. Well, he does have a Pestermite. But I can just fight it. What does he have that's white? Is he going to protect his Pestermite from something? Uh, I'm going to fight it with Garrick. Haha. -ha. And if he, if he has a way to protect it plus Splinter Twin, then so be it. But I'll prob oh sweet, he didn't have it. I was also just gonna leave my mana up. Uh I don't think I want to cast anything here. Eh. Maybe an Elves of Deep Shadow. It's fairly low risk to cast. I don't think I want to run Tarmogoyf out there though. One, two, three, four. Five, six. I could have six mana. Yeah, I think I do actually want to run an elf out here. Reason being that I'd like to um, be able to start chaining these things together the, the, the turn after. It's also just an extra power that I get to add to the board. So, Yeah, I was pretty aggressive by our opponent. Um, with, with Garrick on board, but it also could be that he didn't have any other options. You know, I remember th this is a splinter twin deck, but not what you're used to. It, it's got one splinter twin, like the whole deck. There's one, it has one Kiki Jiki. It, it, it's not the type of thing where, uh, in a, against a normal, normal modern version of the deck, you have to just live in fear constantly. Cause they've got four splinter twin and one or two Kiki Jiki and they've got, four Exarch and like two Pestermite. Like that's the standard. Here, that's not the case at all. It's not even close to that. The, our opponent doesn't have anything close. Oh, that's savage. We get to keep our Courser, but he's going to actually kill Garrick and wipe away uh, the Wolf, the Elf, and the Mystic. So that's good. He had to throw away a Pestermite to make this, this plan work, but it did. So good on him. And now it's Goyf O'Clock. Ooh, Bitter Blossom would be nice as well. All right, so let's rumble. And I'm going to play Goyf and an Elf. Well, 
he kind of did. I mean, I guess he could have end stepped it, but all right. So now we really see if he has a wrath here. His he's got wrath of God, and um, let's take a look real quick. He's got Wrath of God and Supreme Verdict in the deck. Ooh, Narset. He bricked on Narset. Look at the top card. If it's not a creature card, you may reveal it. He didn't reveal any cards, so. Modern Rotisserie is a format where you draft um, you draft the entire modern format face up. And then uh, you build your decks from that. It's singleton. There's It's 40 card decks and, and that's it. Okay. So question number one is, do I ignore Narset? I can't actually kill Narset. I can get her down to one loyalty here. Which actually does have some merit. Yeah, Narset's definitely mediocre on the plus scene. I'm worried about a big minus, though. You know, some big card draw spell that could get our opponent back into the game. The other side of the coin, of course, is that we could go three, four, five, six. That's a two turn clock on, on our opponent here. I think I'm going to play it safe, though, and attack Narset. Uh, because this brings Narset down below. Uh, down to one where <clears throat> uh, she can't minus two to get the instant or sorcery that rebounded. Can I afford to be wrathed twice? No, but I think my opponent, I mean, they need another white mana to in order to wrath either way, but all right. I think I like just bitter blossoming here and playing a bird and that sets up grave Titan next turn. It also lets me play around Mana Leak, which I don't know if BDM ended up getting Splinter Twin, Pact, Negate, which what we would have seen anticipates an option. All right, no, Mana Leak ended up over with uh, with it, with Forsyth. Is the art, it's one white, white U. And yes, Courser, by the way, is rocking it right now, which I'm super stoked about because it wasn't even clear that that Courser was good enough for, for this format, but I wanted another three drop because I can go elf Courser, which is what we did this game, by the way, on a mulligan. Uh, and, and I, I was really happy. All right. Here's oblivion ring for bitter blossom. Ugin will be happy to clean up that mess in a little bit here. Wow, Courser's just a nut. Every other card has been a land. I've run so good with it. And I can actually cast, um, let's see here, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I can actually just cast Ugin. I have a feeling that Ugin would get countered in some way, but I think it's worth trying. So let's go for Ugin. And see if that happens. If Ugin happens, I can kill Narset with Ugin. If Ugin, if Ugin gets countered, I can send the Corsair at Narset and the Tarmogoyf at our opponent. All right, that's going to do it. So right now I'm playing against Josh Monks, who's the producer and background guy for the VSL. He works with Randy on that stuff. But he's playing BDM's deck because BDM couldn't make it um, to the... Uh, he couldn't make it to the event. He had a, a family obligation. So he's playing BDM's deck. So that link I put in earlier that has all the picks, you can look at BDM's and, and these are his picks. Okay, so what do we want to bring in here? Abrupt Decay for sure. That's pretty easy. I think Go for the Throat should probably come in as well. Our opponent really doesn't have a whole lot of ways to finish, like, to, to finish this off outside of the combo. I think I like Duress here. I 
I suppose putrefy. I don't think whip of Erebos is what I want to do here. Hmm. Uh, the link for the picture. I don't know if Pulse comes in. We did see an Oblivion Ring, so probably worth bringing in Pulse. Um, what are the things I want to get rid of? I think Scavenging News is a card that isn't really optimized against this opponent. Liliana is still very good. The Sword is probably mediocre against this opponent. Slime Ball. Slime Ball is actually probably pretty good. So let's get Duress, go for the Throat, and we're going to want Abrupt Decay as well. Thrun could be good. There, He actually doesn't have much permission, though. And Thrun's a little slowish. Maybe not too bad, but not too great either. Like, I like cards like Grave Titan here. Yeah, you're right. I don't think I need Ugin either. I like Karn, though. All right, so we've brought in more removal, basically. And more hand disruption. Yeah, I'm going to cut Ugin. All right, unfortunately, no elf here. Uh, so we're going to have to mulligan again, which is bad luck. But we did last time. Um, am I busy? Yes. Good night tonight. Okay, thank you. Um, so we'll mulligan. All right, this one I'm going to keep. Um, it's got a Tarmogoyf and a Knight's Whisper. So, you know, we do what we do here. Uh, you know, finding an elf is good. Yeah, Putrefy seems fine. Let's see what we get. Yeah, ramp decks do mulligan a lot. They need a specific mix. It's annoying. It's one of the downsides to playing them. Yeah, if Putrefy was Enchantment, I would snap it up. Abrupt Decay is in. Um, all right, go ahead. And then depending on what opponent does, we'll probably just lead with Tarmogoyf here. Oh. Now I want the Putrefy. All right, oh one. Your move. Uh, this, my thinking here is that next turn I'm going to play Knight's Whisper, uh, and that will get at least one card in the graveyard for, for our Goyf. Um, I think I'm going to go Swamp and then leave up green in case we draw an Elf here. All right, we did not, but look at us go now. Just smashing face with an one, two goif. But we did hit a land, which was key. Um, it looks like our best play next turn is just to play Liliana, which is great. That's, that's totally fine by me. We could probably just get rid of Karn here. What have you? Bonfire. All right. So Bonfire is going to take out goif, but we're going to get to stick Liliana and just plus, 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 and try to rip apart his hand. Uh, this is a normal match, best of three. Not leading with Swamp's Telegraph that I didn't board in Wrench Mine. Okay, I, I'm fine with telegraphing that. All right, sweet. Liliana. And, yeah, I think we have plenty of action here where I can, I can uh, discard Karn and not feel that bad about it. And then this elf uh, helps us ensure either Whisperwood or Acidic Slime for next turn. We are up a game. Yeah, we mulliganed in both, but we're up a game right now. He discarded God's Willing. I'm going to discard this forest. We've got plenty of action here. Let's see if we can get our opponent's missing land drops, Anger of the Gods. Wow, okay. 
Now, I think that uh, Whisperwood is the more powerful play, but I'm going to go with Acidic Slime because I think if we take out this Plains, it basically means that our opponent can't uh, really ever cast. Like, it's just going to be super crimped on that color of mana. And then here I can play Whisperwood and sort of take over the game, basically. Ooh, Inquisition. That's interesting. The problem, of course, is that if I play Inquisition, I can't play Whisperwood this turn because of mana. But I could just run Whisperwood out and plus and just get rid of Inquisition and just figure where I'm getting some out of their hand anyway. I'm going to attack here. I don't think blowing up his mana rock is better than planes. I can blow up his mana rock with other cards that can't hit lands. I took him off of an entire color here. That's a pretty big deal. All right. Let's get rid of Inquisition and let's just slam Whisperwood Elemental. Pact of Negation. <laughs> and if this resolves, I think we'll be in really good shape. And it does, and we even get the trigger. All right, so we are off to the races, and also Liliana is at ultimate. Yeah, we can just brick, though. Like, our opponent's not casting anything, so it's not unreasonable to think that they don't have anything that costs three or less, or if they do, it's not an important card. All right, we did it. We won our first match. Woohoo! And that went, according to plan, pretty straightforwardly, right? I mean, that was that went nice. <laughs> Randy just reported in our in our uh, in our Skype chat. He says uh, uh, he says match result: Goblin Grenade two, Rashad zero. <laughs> That's pretty brutal. All right, Chad, you bet, buddy. Yeah, that was rough. All right, so I, can I watch the other matches? I guess not, right? Or let's see. No, I guess we can. I think this is okay, right? There's no... All right, so we can just watch this. This will be fun. And I can chat with you guys and spend more, I can, uh, you know, give a little more attention to the chat than I can when I'm playing the actual game. So so what do we have here? What is Rashad's channel? Um, I think he's on twitch.tv slash GG's live. This, though, is Aaron on the top with, with, with a sick blue deck. And, uh, and down below is Sam Black, and he's playing a crazy, I mean, only Sam could draft this um, type of deck, but he's he's running kind of a a rampy. I don't know, uh, kind of a crazy ramp style deck, basically. <laughs> Hi, Zach. So I'm just watching. 
we already won our match. That's the good news. Um, we won 2-0 over BDM's deck, which reminds me we should probably talk trash to uh, to BDM. Uh, but he's still at his family function, so I guess I can't really get him right now, but we will. Yeah, Sam Black has some real hits. All right, so it looks like Condescend is hitting something. Tusk. Thrag Tusk gets hit by Condescend. Meanwhile, ooh, summoning trap. Oh, no, is he going to hit Emrakul? He has Emrakul in his deck. Oh, he bricked. Oh, no. He bricked off. He didn't hit anything. Oh, that's so sick. Wow. Totally had him. Oh. <laughs> He's even got Emrakul in his deck, too. He could have just completely won, and he whiffed completely. Like, wow, that's bad. The good news is that Eternal Witness is doing an admirable job of keeping Geist of St. Traft at bay, it seems. Ooh, but here's Jace. And that is going to get some cards going for Aaron, who maybe can get that Witness. But the the problem, of course, is that uh, the Witness, like, you, you don't really want to bounce it, right? Uh, you don't want to let Sam replay it. That, that gets pretty awkward, so. Oh, man. Uh, Aaron is on blue-white control. Heavy blue with some white. Yep, that's what he's on. Yeah, he did take seven cards off the top, though. Who knows what they were? Yeah, I can't help myself. I get into this mode and I feel like I'm announcing the the thing. Uh that's funny. No, I just I just want to watch it with you guys. I don't want to do that. <laughs> but it is funny. <laughs> I can't believe you bricked. Ooh, what is going on here? Why is that condescend lit up in the graveyard? Is it Oh, I guess I just hovered over it. Oh, I just hovered over it. All right. Uh, it is giant. Yeah, he he's a primeval titan deck, so he wants to be able to resolve his primeval titan through Aaron's permission spells. Ooh, that's cool. Modern blue white miracles. That sounds sweet. Who do I play next? I don't know. The winner of something and something versus something and something. I don't actually know. I'm just gonna wait for somebody to tell me. But, uh, no, they'd glow red. No one took murderous cut. I don't think so. I had it on my list somewhere, but I didn't end up taking it. It's just hard to fill up the yard in, um, in modern rotisserie. In regular modern, it's trivially easy, but. In rotisserie, you just don't get that many fetches. I don't have any, for example. They kind of went quickly. <sighs> Which matchup is my worst? And is it definitely BDM Sweet Brew? Well, <laughs> since we just beat that deck two games to zero, I don't think that's my worst matchup, though I guess it technically could be uh-oh he got clicked and is playing something anyway titan how did he not take the titan with the click he must have wow that's insane this is old news but why couldn't you go to tape uh the current the, the, that's up to the judges as far as the uh, policy on going to, to the tape. Um, the current thinking is that you shouldn't, that they, they don't want to do it because it can, um, it means that being in the feature match area is you get special rule treatment 
and they don't want to have it biased since it can't be for the whole tournament. So that's currently why they don't. I'm spectating this game. That's right, guys. I'm not playing in this game. We we already won our match, uh, and so we're waiting for the next round. But I thought, well, we'll check in and see what these two nutcases are up to. And uh, so that's what we're doing. Is Eternal Witness going to attack Jace Bellerin? Seems like good trades all around for Sam. He can now block the Geist on the ground. And if he trades for Click or Geist, he's probably happy with it. I guess there's a downside of maybe trading for Fairy Conclave if, if Aaron were to decide to do that. Ooh, what is he doing? Cryptic? He is the one with Cryptic. It is cryptic. He's going to bounce the relic and tap everything else. Wow. So he can hit for 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. He's going for the win here. You see that? He's got 6 with the guys, 3 in the air, and then he can activate Colonnade. And, and Aaron wins the game. That was a, that was a pretty sweet play. What is this cryptic? Well, that would be this right over here, cryptic command, one of the best instants ever. In this case, Aaron, you get to choose two, and he decided to choose to return a permanent to its owner's hand, basically taking Sam off of everything except for one mana spells because of the City of Brass and uh, and also tapping all of his opponent's creatures. Normally, you draw a card in, in addition, but uh, but Aaron decided not to do that. So Aaron won that game. Yeah, that was pretty nice. Aaron's on the main magic twitch. Nice, nice. Cryptic is, yeah, it's fine. It's playable. Are they already back in? Oh, this is the other match. Let's just jump in and see. Whoa! <laughs> Pakula's on the beatdown plan here against Adam. Resto gets to eat Warden of the First Tree and has Adam fall down to four here. You know, that's not that bad for uh, for Prozac here. During judge discussions, particularly that you could just cut to the booth, discussions on how judge calls work there. Yeah, totally. Um, you know, we mentioned it on the stream for coverage that we weren't particularly happy with the way that that sequence went down. And... Uh, you know, we said that we we will be addressing how that works. Um, <clears throat> you know, it wasn't particularly comfortable for me either. Um, you know, being in the booth for a while while that uh, while the while a judge call was going on for that long. You know, of course, we couldn't anticipate how long it would go, but yeah, I'm not. We're we're gonna look at that. Um, hey, Solemn. Yeah, we already won a match. In fact, how, how you like that? <laughs> All that LR work finally paying off. Speaking of LR, I've got some cool stuff um, that I meant to say on here. I'm going to say it on the show, but I figured, um, you know, we could, I might as well mention it here too, which is, let me just find it real quick. Kind of excited. Uh, here and here. This is the thing. You can get t-shirts. They're here. They're on sale at CFB and uh, they're pretty cool. I'll grab one in a minute so you guys can see what one looks like here. Um, but uh, I had a bunch of them in my living room for a month or whatever, but finally sent them down. And uh, yeah, they're cool. They uh, they have the logo on the front and, I, and, a, and a cool insert thing. And they're only 12 bucks. People have been asking for a while. And uh, I also did an extra thing where Everybody that gets one also gets uh, – uh, I'll find one. But um, a pin, just a little pin, you know, like the kind you put on your bag or whatever, and a sticker, just an LR sticker like the ones that you used to get from CK. So anyway, that's fun. Yeah, 12 bucks. I, I tried to get them down as, as low as I could just so, you know, if people wanted one, they could get one. Um, in fact, here, we got a minute. You guys watch this match. I'll go grab the uh, – 
I'll go grab a shirt and some of this stuff. All right. Yeah, I'll put the link in here too, just for you guys. Whoop. Is Sam Black's match back on? I want to see what's going on over there. That one was sick. All right, they're back up. Um, so here's the t-shirt. Let me make sure I can actually see what I'm showing you guys. So there's the shirt. You can see it's just a you know pretty simple black tee, but I got a I got a good shirts so I think I think they're pretty decent, and then this is the little I got this special thing done where the insert on the tag is instead of being like an actual scratchy tag, it's like printed on there, and some fun little jokes, little inside jokes in there for you guys, and then also um, whenever you order one of those from CFB, you get one of these little pins. It's just one of these you know, little pins or whatever, and then uh, a, a sticker like you've seen before. So I thought that would be fun to throw those in with them. So I had those pins made too. So that's it. <laughs> uh, the brand of shirt is called, ne it's called Next Level. <laughs> I had all these boxes called Next Level in my, uh, in my living room. It was pretty funny. Um, the... They are, I, I, I say they run a little small. I, I wear a large t-shirt normally. Um, and, and I wear a large for this, but it's slightly on the small side. Like I can wear the XL on this without it being too big really. So if you're kind of in between, I would go to the, to the next. <laughs> I didn't know what the shipping was. Uh, I don't, they, they have to do that part. So. Yeah. <laughs> I like the idea of putting the sticker on your head. <laughs> yeah, I guess it could be Patrick Chapin Shirt Company. <laughs> it is called Next Level. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. I'd be happy to support his shirt company. Uh, what was your comment? Tezum, is it? I'm, I don't know if I saw it either. Oh, that's awesome. I'm, you're welcome. And I'm really glad to, to hear that by the way. No, I didn't get to see a Black Reds Dragons deck. I've never had Chapin on the stream, but I've had him on the podcast multiple times. In fact, we had him on not that long ago. And yeah, he, he is awesome. Really great guest. Uh, they're printed on um, next level are, are the blanks. I, I just basically didn't want to get those, those beefy tees, you know, those really kind of stiff, heavy ones. I got a little bit softer shirts. They seem fine. I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to say that I'm like blown away by them, but they're good. Like I've, I've been wearing them around and stuff. I wore them at basketball too, just to see if they can, you know, kind of hold up to a beating and they've been totally fine. <laughs> well, it looks like Sam is just kind of going off here. Aaron has no pressure and three cards in hand. And yeah, I think this one might be over pretty quickly here. Yeah, you're welcome. Blue black is sweet. Starting your own magic podcast. Um, well, you should definitely do it. Um, but if you are going to do it and if you want to take it seriously, I think that there's a few things that you should consider. Um, and they're, and they're really important if you want to be successful and they're not even that hard. Um, but the first one is to be consistent 
I think that you have to put out your show every whatever if you want it to be successful. Now, if you don't really care, that's fine. Just do it when you can do it. But if you want to grow an audience and like actually reach people, they need to know that, oh, it's Thursday. Oh, it's Friday. The show's out or, you know, and if you just miss weeks here and there because you got lazy or whatever, and trust me, it's easy to do, uh, you know, you, you, you'll lose your listeners. It just, it won't be the same. Uh, the other thing is to, Basically, you want to be able to describe your show to to somebody who doesn't listen to it in one sentence that makes sense. It doesn't have to be anything complicated, but if your podcast is a bunch of people sitting around talking about magic, that's not really compelling. Like, why would I bother listening to that? There's a lot of them. The the way to do it is to think of whatever your show is about. And it, it doesn't have to be complicated. Like, LR, it's about limited. That's it. It's a podcast about getting better at limited. That's it. But that's really important because if somebody were to come up to a friend or whatever that listens to it and say, um, Hey, what you like this podcast, what is it about? And they, and they just said, Oh, it's a podcast about how to get better at limited. Oh, sweet. Now I know what I'm listening to. And maybe I want to, and maybe I don't, but the important part is that they know what, what it's for. So that's it. Um, thank you. Ooh, nice. Cool. That's great. White Robin. Appreciate it. LR subreddit is awesome. How'd I do in the draft? Well, I've, um, I won the first round, but I'm now waiting, I guess, for my next round opponent. I don't actually know. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> oh, that's awesome, Sunshine Dan. Congrats. That's really cool. The cameraman use where where should I be here? What am I doing? Should I sit up? Uh when I play, I sit up a bit. I can Is this better? Looks like Sam's going for the kill here. Oh, Golgari charm. I should have thought of that. No, I didn't think of it. I had a lot of the other sort of catch-all uh, green-black spells, but I did forget about Golgari charm. Am I running my namesake card? This is modern rotisserie draft. <laughs> so no. All right, and it looks like Sam has won his match. So hopefully we'll be able to to get things moving again uh, for ours. Oh, I like the way you think, Sunshine Dan. That's better. Oh, that's awesome. Thanks for saying that. Thelum soup. So just to recap, the winners were Randy, Sam, Prozac, and me. We, we were the ones that, that won our first match. How many watches do I own? Uh, you don't want to know. I got a lot of them. I actually collect watches. It's It's a hobby of mine. I got some sitting right here, in fact. I did not take Man of War because I'm not in blue. No, that wasn't me. That was Sam Black doing the things with Bloom and Titans and all that. No, that's good, Raiden. Mortal. 
more watches than Rise Draft wins? No, not that many. Yeah, we could do a watch collection stream for the watch guys <laughs> sometime. Yeah, I'll probably. I, I always say I'm going to stream more, but it's hard for me to do just because of scheduling stuff. But I do have a lot of hobbies. That is true. What was it? I probably screwed that up. All right. I am playing Adam. So that would be Adam Prozac. And let's see what Adam's ended up being on. Oh, I know a couple of things he's got. So he's on Path, Restoration Angel, Lingering Souls. This is actually going to be fairly tough. He can grind through pretty well and has a pretty decent top end too. Um, we need to pull Liliana out. Um, he's got lingering souls. He had something else too that I remember being like, oh crap. On burial rights, we can help him out with that, which would be bad. Oh, this doesn't look too bad though. I think we do probably pull Liliana, or if we do keep her in, which I think is reasonable, we only minus her. Okay, he wants me to set up the match. Whoops. No, no, no. All right, so that's right. And then format is free form. Watchers, yes, allowed. Match options, 40 minutes. No. No. Ah, dang it. Okay, there and there now. Yeah, okay. All right, we got him. You guys want the link for the spreadsheet again? All right. Good old magic online. Uh, let's see here. I want this here so you guys can keep up as well. All right, so let's see if we can't beat this one. So this this is heavy, heavy white. Basically, he was the white drafter for the first uh, big chunk of the game. And that means that... Um, he branched a little bit into black and a little bit into blue. I don't know how much of it he's actually playing, but th that's where he ended up going. Ooh, Bitter Blossom's nice. Yeah, this hand is very good. Uh, we can go turn one Inquisition, turn two Bitter Blossom, or Ooze. No, uh, do I own any Power Nine? Do you mean in real life or not in real life? I own all the Power 9 on Magic Online. Um, I kind of bought into Vintage so I can play Vintage, but not here. Um, let's see here. Oh, thank you, Sunshine Down. That's awesome. I really appreciate that. Uh, no, I don't have any in real life, but I do have these bad beasts. This is all I need right here. Look at those. Oh, love these. I just keep these on my desk. These are my beta bolts. Yeah, Randy is going to probably just destroy Sam. Um, Randy's deck's very fast. It's a tough matchup for many. I think it's. I think we actually have one of the best shots against it, and it's still good. All right, so we can take Castigate, Mindstone, and he's got Gifts. And <laughs> what did he mulligan? He mulligan just to six. So Castigate, what does that do? It gets cards out of our – reveals his or her hand. You choose an online card and exile that card. So he's going to turn to Castigate, get rid of Bitter Blossom. And he's got gifts with his Iona already in hand. Yeah, I'm just going to take Castigate here and 
and protect our bitter blossom. We also have scavenging ooze for if he does go for uh, anything else. But I think it's we'll just let him have mind stone and not not really sweat that too badly here. Uh, you got a seventh pick command. Uh, that's very good. Um, yeah. <laughs> Somebody screwed up. I mean, if nobody else is blue black, then so it goes, but that card's amazing. Oh, he found a sword here. So that's probably our acidic slime target there. But right now I think we're fine. Um, so I think we're going to play Scavenging Ooze and the Elf here. And this sets up next turn to play Acidic Slime on either Arcane Sanctum or Sword of Body and Mind. We always have El these rogues that can block the sword, so I'm not like super worried about it, but it is a thing. All right, so here comes Gifts, but we've got Scavenging News. So, uh, you know, he's going to get some value here, but we'll be able to, to get him. Yeah, this art's pretty intense. Jesper made that in 1993. Yeah, we went, we went old school. No, um, I actually wrote about the uh, commands um, for the column this week. It went up today. How's it going, Ben? Ben Adams and uh, and I ranked the blue black one number one for limited, not for constructed, but for limited. <clears throat> so gifts is now searching up something, but the things that go in the yard we're going to be able to eat with scavenging news. So we're not that worried about that. He'll normally you would go get like lingering souls and like kind of try to do value, but I am streaming. Yes, we're having fun. This is the vintage or excuse me, modern rotisserie draft. That's what we're doing here. Having some good clean fun. Yeah, you know, I, I, I often wondered um, if Jesper used a, a model or maybe somebody who he, who he knew as the basis for the card. I mean, it just looks so much like a, a real person, you know. All right, so he's got Baneslayer, Resto, Blade Splicer, and Finks. And this says, um, target opponent chooses two. Put the chosen cards in your graveyard. So the two I pick here are going right to the yard. So these are the ones that we're just going to eat up. Um... Baneslayer is actually an issue, so that needs to go to the yard. Kitchen Finks is not much of an issue because we've got um, scavenging news going. So I'm going to put Baneslayer in the yard. And then I'm trying to decide if I want to give him Restoration Angel or Blade Splicer. They're both kind of problematic, but not really. All right, so Baneslayer is in the yard. I think I'm going to give him Blade Splicer and Finks. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Finks isn't a big issue. And remember, we're going to be able to acidic slime away the sword here, which is going to make really anything he does just a lot worse. Ooh, Garrick too? Well, hello, friend. Uh, of course you can. Yeah, I don't want to let him resto with the um, with the two blinkers. That that's not good. That's not good for me at all. Okay, so what do we want to do here? Um, I think we can wait a turn on taking out the sword of body and mind. What was in his hand before? Iona, gifts ungiven. So we kind of need to leave up scavenging news at least just to take out these two creatures so that he doesn't get well hmm. yeah we probably don't need to do anything like that actually
I could, this is interesting. I could just play Garrick and leave up scavenging news one activation and then play slime next turn on whatever. I think I like that. Let's play Garrick. Attack with both. Make a dude. I'm not going to bother eating anything right now, just in case he finds, like, I think he's got burial rights or something along those lines. Yeah, he has gifts on burial rights. Yeah, I can Acidic Slime his Bounce Land as well, though I think I'm better off just getting rid of the sword. Like, his mana is pretty well set up. If I take this out, he's still got all of his colors and one, two, three, four mana. So I'm not... You know, it, it, it's tempting, don't get me wrong, but it's it's not exactly wrecking him to do either. So he's going to go for Finks here as well. Okay. This should benefit us. Let's get Resto out of here. Nom, nom, nom. And we drew Courser. I need to be able to eat this Bane Slayer. That's not a big deal, though. But the sword is a, is is important. Um, I I do have Bitter Blossom to just sort of sit back, so it's not you know the end of the world. But I think what I want to do here is fight this thing, and that lets me start searching up a bunch of creatures. The question is just, do I want to acidic slime here? Or do I want to play Courser or Acidic or acidic Slime or just leave up a bunch of Scavenging News activations as well? I could also get pretty aggressive and just Acidic Slime away the Golem, right? Acidic Slime, the Golem, that gives me an attack with Scavenging Ooze, uh, Wolf, ro Fairy, Fairy immediately. which is certainly an option. It, it means that he can't block with Kitchen Finks because then I can scavenge news away the, the Finks, which is bad for him. Yeah, I think I'm going to wait on the Courser a turn here. And I think I'm going to slime ball something here. Eh, I'll take out the sword. It's a it's a safer play, I think. And I still get to attack for a couple here. I could get pretty aggressive and take out the golem, but I think that um, taking out the sword is safer, and this way I get to leave up one mana for scavenging news here as well, and I can start sacking rogues to Garrick to find whatever creature I want, which you might imagine is going to get pretty good when I start slamming Grave Titans and such. Uh, we will take out Bane Slayer Angel. Okay. Good. Uh, so we're attacking with all of these things. Four, five, hmm. six. No, I still need to get ooze up a bit bigger than it is here. But I mean, whatever, we're in a great position. There's no doubt about that. I wonder if I want to even play Courser here. Let's let's take a look at his deck, or not his deck, but his draft list real quick here. Path Resto, let's see, Flats, Crusader, Mutavault, Kozilek, that's not a thing. Day of Judgment, which he might have played. Gideon Jura certainly matters. Celestial Purge is going to be out of the board, but he will bring it in. And then we know he's got Iona, I think, is his last card in hand, right? Let's double check that. I'm pretty sure that's what it is, though. Reveals his hand, Iona, Shield of Emeria. He's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh-oh. That could get interesting. 
She costs nine, right? Uh, let's see here. Iona, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes, she costs nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, he's one mana away from casting Iona. Interesting. All right, so let's. I think what we should do here is sacrifice a creature and go find something that maybe we can cast right now. So we can get Whisperwood, Grave Titan, Sidisi to sack another creature, and then we get Sidisi plus whatever else we got. But it's a little slower. You know, I think we just get Grave Titan here. Just get the big gravy train, slam him down. And even if, and then that way, if even if he casts Iona, it kind of doesn't matter. I think that Sidisi is a little too slow in this case. Okay, Rumble mode, engage. He does have Day of Judgment, that's true. What are you guys up to? Why did I sack before attacks? Uh, I just, I sacked a Summoning Sick Fairy Rogue. I wasn't going to attack with it under any circumstance. All right, Gravy Train. Is he sacking Mindstone? Oh, okay. Well, I guess he's not on the Iona plan. I guess he, he's realized that this is too late. So now he's looking for a Wrath. And if he finds it, he'll sweep away all of these things, but we'll have uh, Garrick, and then we'll get to play Corsair and have Bitter Blossom going, so it's not the end of the world. It wouldn't be great, but... We're not attacking with Slime because this thing has not First Strike. We should be attacking with Slime. I guess I don't want to trade it for... The golem? Maybe I do? Pfft, yeah, I probably do. Yeah, I'm going to attack with slime. Uh, let's see here. I always think it has first strike even when it doesn't anymore. All right, this guy's a 5-5 five five now. Hey, look, it's Thoughtseize. All right, let's do that. Just in case he drew something sweet. What have you found? He's going to dismember the ooze. Is there any way for me to get a creature in the yard here? I don't think so. Okay. No, I can't. All right. Well, let's see what we get. Oh, there's more. Path the Grave Titan. All right, well, we're going to get Iona, which I think he'd probably rather have in his yard at this point anyway. Oh, well. Okay. Um... So let's see here. Now Kitchen Finks is a real thing, so that's kind of annoying. Uh, so I think we just keep beating down in the air. I don't even think I want to trade Acidic Slime for Finks just because now it actually does trade. I mean, I could attack with all of these and this. If I do that, let's, let's just say I attack with everything. He eats one, he trades for one, he takes zero from that one, so he takes two, three, four, five, six... I think this is just better. I think we're just going to ride Bitter Blossom to the finish here. Yeah, I'm not super thrilled with how that panned out. But I still like our position a lot. But he had two removal spells in hand that were both instant speed, which is pretty damn annoying. And now I'm going to play Knight's Whisperer and then probably just go get um, Sidisi. 
Because now CDC can go get one of my other planeswalkers. I mean, I have a whole lot of things I can do now. I might even be able to just alpha strike here too. There's Liliana. Yeah. Just play Liliana here. All right. He didn't want to show me that last card, but I wanted to see it. Okay. So what are we taking out against this opponent? Or what are we bringing in? I should say, um, Shriek Ma seems interesting. Putrefy, Pulse, Decay. These are all like possibilities against his deck. I don't think they're great. Damnation actually seems like an option. Go for the throat. Hmm. Front seems okay. Wheel, I don't think is worth a card here. How aggressive is he? Medium aggressive, I would say. Who's the beat down? Unclear. N neither of us. I, it's very draw dependent. Like we have similar decks as far as like when we're hitting. Yeah, I'm going to bring in the sword. I mean, abrupt decay. I think, I think that one I want for sure. I think Doomblade sticks for sure. Probably Damnation is worth bringing in just a, like as a haymaker if we fall behind or whatever. And then I think I want Pulse just for the, you know, sort of killing anything aspect. I think these are all good. Uh, I think our mid-range plan is quite strong against this deck as well. The scavenging news did really good work. Yeah, the decks are similar. That's original Lanamar Elves art. What are you don't don't make fun of that. That's sweet. I think I'm gonna kill Thoughtseize and Inquisition. Not that they're bad, but I think we can just deal with his threats after, and making him discard's not really great. I'll take out Liliana as well. Eh, you know, Liliana, let's see. He plays... No, no, it's bad. Liliana's just bad against him. He plays Lingering Souls and, like, Kitchen Finks and, uh... Yeah, a whole bunch of stuff that just doesn't care. Like, if we make him sack half of the Kitchen Finks, he's happy. You know, he plays Blade Splicer, he sacks the little part. It's like, whatever. Hey, team ass. What's up, dude? Do you like the cuts, Ore? I, I think that's better. I It's close. I don't know what else to cut necessarily. I mean, all these things are pretty decent against this, this deck. <laughs> Blasphemy. All right. So is this a keep? We do nothing in the first two turns, then we can play Pulse to kill anything annoying. And then we get to play Oracle, which is like the best thing ever. Yeah, I'm going to keep this hand. Uh, I don't think this hand is explosive, like we've certainly seen better. But, you know, if we draw an Elf, it'll really turn around, I think. And uh, I do think the hand is a keep. <laughs> That's really not very nice at all. I mean, this sword is obviously the nut against this opponent. It's the exact sword that you want against this. <laughs> all right, so what's the what's the big kick kickoff here for for Adam? If it's something really aggressive, no, it was a talisman, so we're okay. Mm, probably just going to pulse the first thing that I can pulse. Um, I mean, I could slam the sword, but it's not really getting put on anything anytime soon. So if he gives me a pulse target, I will. This is not a pulse target. <laughs> uh, crap. How in the world are we going to deal with that thing? 
All right, let's at least try to take him off of some of his mana here. Oh, man, that is brutal. We are going to need to race him with Grave Titan. <laughs> no, we took Lily out. <laughs> yeah. Hey, GX Slim, I remember you. Yeah, I can't make the cards too much bigger. Uh, they're kind of where they're at here. Oh, so we're just dead in a turn. <laughs> wow, we are getting absolutely housed here. Yeah, we're just dead. Holy crap. Turn five kill out of the white deck. All right. Well, we're not beating that draw. <laughs> uh, that's pretty good. Oh, you know what I should probably bring in is Shriekma. Shriekma is good against him. I don't know what the hell we're going to do against that thing. I mean... Look at our deck. Like, we can't touch it. We can do a couple of things, but nothing that really does it. <sighs> wow, that's savage. Um, damnation. There we go. We know why we brought it in now. We're so smart. I'm going to take out Goyf and bring in Shriekma. Thoughtseize looks a little better there, but... I can carn it, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. All right, this is an easy keep. All right, we found an answer to that stupid card. So we got Bop into Courser into Slime Ball eventually. Yeah, I mean, I could keep an Inquisition or whatever, but I think it's an overreaction because it's not good against him generally or it's mediocre, and I think the removal spells are better, so I'm just going to stick to my guns here and hope he doesn't draw it. You don't want to overreact, you know, like it's only one card in his whole deck and he, he played it into our slow draw when he was on the play and he had to back it up with uh, Elspeth to make that clock. I mean, I think we actually were going to be able to race it with the Grave Titan. No, dismember our bird. Oh, that was a good draw. Now we can actually play Corsair on turn three at least. Start getting a little bit of value. Oh, man, Acidic Slime, this thing. Oh, I can't wait. I am going to get you. I am going to get you. Pulse, sweet. That gives us something to do in between. So if he plays a problem permanent here, we can kill it. But we are slime balling the hell out of this Basilica the first chance we get. Yeah. Yeah, I was a little surprised. Ooh, I'm so jealous uh, about that bolster deck that I did on my video um, for CFB. I thought it was mediocre and ended up being kind of good. Okay, Pulse. Pulse hits ye old hand. And the Karn Father is, uh, is there. I like this. And let's rumble. All right, well, I've always wanted to go Karn into Ugin. <laughs> Maybe this is it. <laughs> hey, Maxwell. He's mono removal. Well, I think they're fine. I mean, they must be removed and they're cheap. If he removes those, then when we slam Grave Titan, he doesn't have anything to do about it. All right, so... Let's attack. And I'm going to slime him. One timer. One timer for the slimer. Doing it. Still on the stack. Why are you thinking so much? Don't counter my slime ball. Yeah. I will choose this one. Oh, yeah. No, don't play a stupid angel. Oh, gifts. Okay. No, I don't think he does have counters. I, I looked before. He's got a couple. I can't remember what they were. We can look real quick. 
Uh, this is him right here. Path. Let's see. His blue cards didn't start coming in until down here. Jace, Memory Adept. Yeah, he's not on any counters. Lingering Souls and Iona. All right. Well, I obviously don't have a choice. He did the thing where you just do two cards. Which makes me think that he's got um, Unburial Rites in his hand. And he's going to be one turn away from flashing that back and getting back Iona. Uh, the good news is you can't name Colorless and we've got two Colorless things here. So that's nice. And we haven't hit a land in a little while, which would be really nice, but that's okay. Uh, I'm going to rumble here. Considering pulsing the Demir Signet here, I don't care about this. That's fine. Yeah, I'm going to pulse the Signet. If I can keep him off of his mana, uh, then he can't cast in Burial Rites. <clears throat> and, uh, and then that means that I get a few more turns of, like, if I can get Bitter Blossom down first or whatever. All right, there's Day of Judgment. All right. Well, let's settle in. Yeah, we're land destruction in, but it's because I think he's going to go land and burial rights and, and play Iona. Oh, he's already got it here. All right, well, that makes a lot more sense. Thank you. Thank you for pointing that out. <laughs> yes, Matthew, it is. Um, but anyway, same reasoning. I just don't want him to be able to do that. All right, he chose black, and he's going to kill us. Wow, we were at 22, but going down to 21, we can just start blocking. All right, this works. And we're going to go Karn, kill Iona, and then Ugin, destroy the board. At least that's the idea. And we're going to start buying time immediately by chump blocking with Fairy Rogues. Mindstone, okay. Don't do it. Ooh. Land, please. All my lands untapped. I'm not playing any tap lands in the whole deck, so that's the good news, too. Ooze Ball. You know, Ooze is not good, but it's not that bad either. Um, it lets us gain a couple of life here and sort of keep ahead of Bitter Blossom. Um, but we just need to find a land. If we find a land, I think we're good to go. We, we slam Karn. We probably just kill the Mirren Crusader. And then we chump block. Hmm. Yeah, it's interesting anyway, but we have options obviously. And he's going to get us for four here. We're going to block. Where were you earlier? Bad ooze. He's got five cards in his hand. What is this? Whoa. All right. Well, we're going to need to find this land pretty darn quickly. Uh, does he have any more things? No. But we do. Land. Brup Decay. Brup Decay looks pretty awful here. Um, but I guess we can start attacking. The problem is the Bane Slayer is going to kind of wreck us. Not only can we not cast it, it doesn't do anything anyway. Um, let's see here. Damnation would be good. Take a hit here. Don't think I want to take a hit here. Think I'm going to take a hit here. Oh, that's not good. Well, I don't see how I get out of this path or out of this. Yeah, whatever you want to call it, that I've walked down here. What am I missing here? Is this a demon that I don't know about? 
What does he have? He has path. Oh, that's a good thing. That's a very good thing for us. All right, so that's happy times because now we block, we take nine this turn. We don't die though. And then we get to play Karn. Or if we draw land, we can even play Ugin. Though Ugin's a little awkward. Because he can't kill Iona. Ugh. Also Damnation, let's see, he named Black, right? Yeah, so we can't do that. No! Too many problems. He's milling me. Okay, we hit a land. Yeah, Ugin does not kill Iona, but we can take a hit from Iona and still be alive. And then we can play Karn, which does kill Iona. And Ugin kills this, 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 the, it kills everything else. It doesn't kill Mindstone, but it gets rid of our Bitter Blossom, which is probably a good thing. So let's play Ugin. Minus five Ugin. And then we're going to get Iona next turn. Right? Five does it. Five, five, five. Yeah. Okay. Now, if he wants, he can attack me and bring me down to two, but then we're not dead. And he probably thinks that that's the play because it's really hard to get rid of an Iona without having access to black. But we can't attack. It has so many sickness. When the when the little fairies come in on your side, they, they come in with summoning sickness, so you can't... This is a sweet game. Down to two. Gideon! Ugh! And a tar pit? Oh my god. Ugh, that sucks. Yeah, I can't get rid of enough here because he, he's now presented three lethal threats this one turn. Yeah, he wins this one. Boo. That was close. If I think we found a mana that one turn sooner, then I, I think we can get there. But we missed that one turn where we drew Abrupt Decay and he hit us for like nine or ten that turn. And, and that's the problem. If we have a bigger life cushion, we've got the tools to, to get out of this mess, but we don't have enough uh, as it stands, so... All right, he got us. GG's. All right, so we lost that. I don't know actually know what that means. We're going to play the next round no matter what. Uh, the, the, this first part is Swiss. Wow, Sam beat Randy? So what are you guys up to in the chat over here? Are you sad? Yes, I'm sad too. Fog would have been great. <laughs> Why do not commit honorable... Sub you sh you're right. Ugh. It's the only re realistic thing to do. That would have been proof that Fog is a good card. I did do my best. It was close. It was good and close. I thought we had a good match there. I Like I said, I think that one turn where we bricked on the land... Um, 
I think that we just completely recover from that point. And honestly, I thought that when I played Ugin, we were going to be in a good place, but I did not plan on him putting out two lethal threats. Um, I don't know what Rashad's record is. Oh, they're playing still. Let's look. <laughs> look at look at Rashad's board. <laughs> He's got Sultai Skullkeeper and Armored Scob. <laughs> nah, Crusader's not that bad. I've got multiple answers to Crusader in the main. Obviously, it's going to be good against me, but I the discard spells against him are, are very mediocre. I don't think that I needed... I think I was better off just having answers to his other threats. Myth realized on four. That's BDM's deck. This guy is... Rashad and he is playing um he's playing self mill. Uh let's see if his graveyard has what's it called? No, not yet. But he's playing a laboratory maniac deck and it looks like he's getting pretty well wrecked by Magus of the Moon here. <laughs> Hero of Avison you popped in for modern rotisserie draft. So we drafted the entire um, modern format. Well, uh, the draftable cards were the entire format. All right. Oh, yeah. Rashad lost. Okay. Poor Rashad. I think he's 0-2. Yeah, he's 0-2 now. All right. So it looks like they're going to get the uh, the pairings up now, and then we'll be playing our next – I think that was the last match. Yeah, it was because this is the next one. So, yeah, we're going to be – we're going to be going. Yeah, if you guys want to see what the draft looked like, this is it right here. Um, so you can look at the top and see the player's name. And then these are the picks that we had. It goes in order like this, and then it comes back around like this. So that's how the picks are chosen. So, for example, I first picked Batter Skull, then Noble Hierarch went, and then Lightning Bolt, Path, Snapcaster. And you can see kind of how it goes along here. So if you want to look at one person's deck, you just look up and down. And you can see all of the cards that they drafted. There's a link to the uh, thing if you want it. <laughs> All right, they're getting the thing set up right now. All right, I'm playing against Randy. Good old Randolph. All right, we'll we'll have to get him. Is Graham here? Oh hi. Um only available at source. Oh yeah. Somebody said that earlier too. What's the plan against Randy? Uh, probably get our ass kicked for the first round or for the first game and then hope that our sideboard plan works. We have a lot of cheap removal to interact with him and we have some decent life gain like obstinate bail off and stuff, but yeah. Hey doc. Um, I just gave it to you a minute ago. 
Um, you won the die roll. Yay, we won the die roll. That's a good thing. All right, this is a keep. Um, this is obviously not great, but <clears throat> this has all of our colors and any spells we draw, we should be set up to cast and we get to keep him off balance a little bit with Inquisition on the turn as well. So, yeah, can't be too picky with these. So Randy is on, um, like he's the red deck basically. Like he's got, he's red, white. But he he's he is the red deck of the bunch here. All right, so he's got Krenko's command, Rakdos, Cackler, and Chain to the Rocks. So I think we just take the Cackler. That way he doesn't get to play anything right away. Uh, yeah, Randy's up on his stream. I think it's Arbuler slash Arbuler, I believe. Oh yeah. Turn three Oracle. <laughs> when you're when you when you kept a, a land heavy hand, a five lander, that's pretty nice. Yeah, Randy's hand is real bad. But he gets to go Krankos command here, but then we play Oracle, so I think I'm pretty happy with that. So anyway, um Randy's deck is really good. Um it's very consistent and smooth, and I definitely respect it, but I did draft some stuff. I I did do some of the drafting with it in mind. Um, so it is not a deck that I'm, I haven't considered yet. Let's just at least put it that way. Okay. So Garrick will be great. Garrick can come down and, uh, wreck, but I think Randy is probably going to need to get rid of Oracle immediately. Um, because he had a white mana source. Yeah. He had a sacred foundry in his hand, so he can go sacred foundry, chain to the rocks or Oracle, which I think is a pretty good line. Um, but then Garrick does present problems for him. But I think he's got to do it. Oracle's just too good. The good news, or the, the thing that he doesn't know, is that we're only on two lands in hand anyway, so it's not like we're ramping in anything really important. But, yeah, like I said, I don't blame him. Oh, he drew something, too. Young Pyromancer, holy crap. Well... So basically what he's saying is I can play Garrick Relentless and trade it for Young Pyromancer plus a Goblin. Um, I could also just start making tokens here. This is actually a really interesting choice because if I use it to kill Young Pyromancer, then he attacks with both Goblins. I can block one with Elvish Mystic and Garrick dies. Or I can just start making two twos, which are pretty good against the one ones that the Pyromancer makes. But he's got a lot of three burn spells in his in his deck so he could just easily top deck like you know whatever a lightning bolt which is what he first picked and just kill garrick um i think i am gonna actually just start making wolves though i can block with mystic but garrick would be down to one so i could only block one goblin so i'm just gonna start making wolves and hope that randy doesn't find a burn spell in the next turn or two because if i can make two or three wolves then i don't really care about young pyromancer but if he like snaps it off right now and kills garrick it's going to be really annoying because I don't think I can beat Young Pyromancer, you know, with, with – obviously I don't have anything really going here. So, But if, if Randy bricks, then I think we're in decent shape. So we saw Kranko's Command, Mountain, Sacred Foundry, Bloodstained Mire, Chain to the Rocks. And we've seen uh, Bloodstained Mire, Kranko's Command, Sacred Foundry, Chain to the Rocks. So these are unknown cards at this point. Mountain. Goblin guide. You know, how aggressive do you want to get, Randy? Attack with all the three of these goblins. I could trade here and then trade a... Oh, he's going to attack with the team. All right, well, that's not bad for me at all. I get to block here and here. And Garrick actually lives through this to keep making more tokens, too. So that wasn't too bad, actually. And I got rid of Young Pyromancer. I didn't really kill anything that was of consequence to me. Bitter Blossom, huh? Well, it's not a creature, so I don't really have much of a choice here. Um, and I do think I play the Bitter Blossom. It's scary to play it against the burn deck, but he's almost out of gas here. And... Uh, 
and I'm stable. Like right now my Garrick is, is in a good place. So, all right, we're underway. I think I sack, I think I sack a fairy rogue here and go get something huge and just get this game over with. I can go get grave Titan right now, slam it and just crush him. Um, what else could I get? Acidic slime to get back my Oracle. That's not really that great. I could get Sidisi, play it, sacrifice a wolf, have Sidisi, and then go get whatever I wanted. I could go get Karn. I could get a sword, which gains me life. I could get Ugin. I think I just want to get Grave Titan and just cast it this turn, though. I think that's the most efficient play. So that's what I'm going to do. He's on one, and Grave Titan's impossible to beat basically from his perspective because I play the, uh, I play the, uh, I'm going to wait. Um, because even if he kills grave Titan, I still have the zombies. So, all right, he gave up. Yeah. I think that's definitely, I think getting grave Titans, the best play there. All right. So now our deck is going to transform. We're bringing in primal command, Obstinate Bailoth, maybe Wall of Roots, uh, Abrupt Decay for sure, Pulse, Putrefy, Whip, Damnation, probably Duress. Like, we're going to change from a green deck to a black deck, basically. Um, so let's get some of this stuff out. Like, Tarmogoyf can go, Knight's Whisper can go. Bitter Blossom can go. Thoughtseize can go. Uh, I don't think – I think Acidic Slime's mediocre in this matchup. Certainly not as good as some of the cards I have over here. Um, so let's bring in Whip. Abrupt Decay. Bailoth Command. And then I have to decide on Damnation, Duress, Putrefy, Pulse. And I think I want... I think I want Putrefy. Pulse does hit Chain of the Rocks, which is pretty nice. But I think this is actually better. I still run the Elves because if he uses his Burn Spell on the Elves, I can live with that. Uh, what else are you guys saying? Can't beat Thrun. Yeah, he can. He he can just overwhelm Thrun. I, I might be bring it in. Thrun's beatable, though. Um, he can't target it. That's nice. But uh, yeah, Karn and Ugin are, are coming out for sure. That That's easy. Um, so I guess I'll probably keep... What do you guys think about Shriek Ma? Maybe Damnation? Oh, no, no, we're not cutting Sword. Sword's super important. It gains three life when it hits. If it hit once, like, it just starts taking cards out of his hand. Yeah, I'm going to bring in the bolt, the Pulse. I like Pulse. Karn isn't necessarily bad, but I don't want to do it. I could take Elves of Deep Shadow out. That is definitely a possibility. I could also cut Liliana of the Veil. And bring in, like, Thrun Arbor Elf. Liliana is like decent against him, but not great. I probably won't go for the throat. Yeah, I won't go for the throat over Putrefy, I think. All right, now we're in business. I need one extra card. I guess I can play both of these. Maybe it's just Goyf. Damnation's okay here. Yeah, I'll try Damnation. All right, there's our deck. So as you can see, we made some huge changes. Yeah, the wall. I bet you I, I should put in the wall for. Um, I should put in the wall for one of the elves. I think. I think I like that. All right, here's a nice opener. Yeah, this is a really good opener. Think I'm just gonna. Oh, is this goblin guide? Oh, it's cackler. All right. I think I'm gonna lead with Inquisition, because I don't have anything to do right away. I can go. I can go elvish mystic the next turn and then cast a four drop. Still on time. And this could be a key one or two drop that I need to take out of his hand before he deploys it. All right, so he's got S Goblin War Driver, which he can cast Cranko's Command and Searing Blaze. Yikes. So if I take Cranko's Command, he plays War... 
War Driver. I play Mystic. He kills Mystic with Searing Blaze, kind of wrecks me. Hmm. 